poke your head into just about any pantry in the United States and you're almost guaranteed to find a bottle of red, tangy, delicious ketchup. Whether we're putting it on breakfast, lunch, or dinner, the smooth and slightly spicy condiment makes just about any food taste better with only a little dollop. Today, we're slathering up your plate with a healthy helping of facts about that all-American condiment that isn't even American, ketchup. But before we do, make sure you season your subscription page with Weird History Food, so you could be informed every time we take a tasty trip through history. But we've preambled long enough. Now it's time to catch up. The origins of the sweet and tangy condiment do not include America, and in fact, don't even include tomatoes at all. Nope, the first reference of what would eventually become ketchup occurred somewhere around 300 BC in early Southeast Asia. Ancient texts documented the use of fermented pastes made not from tomatoes, but from soybeans, fish entrails, and meat byproducts. Oh yeah, our stomachs are rumbling already. This fish paste was called ketchup or koi chop and was carted all across the ocean along with the early East explorers, eventually making its way to China. This proto-ketchup had more of a soy sauce consistency and was lauded for its pungent smell as well as its ability to sit for long journeys without spoiling. This is what made the sauce particularly attractive for early traders. Eventually, the ketchup would make its way westward. In the 1600s, after trading with Dutch and English sailors, the treat was brought back to Europe. The world eventually developed ketchup fever, which, incidentally, could have been treated with a spoonful of ketchup, since it was briefly sold as a medicine in the 1830s. But as far as the food goes, ketchup went through several makeovers as it evolved into the zesty red sauce we use today. It turns out the word ketchup is a catch-all for every alternative tried before landing on tomatoes. Back in the 1800s, it wouldn't be surprising to find ketchup made from sharp-smelling foods, like oysters or anchovies, to sweet fruits like lemon or even peach. 18th century cookbooks showcased other varieties, including a commemorative Prince of Wales ketchup, made from elderberries and anchovies as well as a variation, rumored to be Jane Austen's favorite, made from mushrooms. Early ketchup was made with anything that could add a little spice to the bland hardtack and mundane salt pork eaten by sailors on long journeys across the ocean. Eventually, those journeys included the United States. Ketchup had a long and ever-changing journey on its way to becoming America's number one condiment. In fact, Professor Dan Jarofsky of Stanford University was able to trace ketchup's lengthy journey from Southeast Asia to China, to Europe, and finally, the United States. And ketchup's rise in popularity during the 1700s was helped tremendously by the availability of spices in England. Spices like cinnamon, mustard seed, nutmeg, and cayenne pepper are instrumental in creating good ketchup sauce for trading. The addition of these spices made ketchup a much sought-after item for European trading routes. These updated recipes were touted as a High East India sauce, and would have been brought to America around the same time as the British colonies started establishing themselves. But in order to get to the classic red version we know today, we need to fast forward to 1812. That was when a Philadelphia scientist and horticulturalist named James Meese used tomatoes in the recipe for the first time. Mises' recipe was the first to call for tomatoes, or as they were called at the time, love apples, due to their use as an aphrodisiac. And since tomatoes are native to North America, Mises' recipe helped to solidify what we now know as classic ketchup. Real tomato ketchup? Oh, nothing but the best. When we think of all American foods like hamburgers, fries, and hot dogs, it's hard not to imagine ketchup somewhere in that mix. But how did this two millennia old condiment become the American staple it is today? British colonists brought their early versions of ketchup to America around the 17th century, making the condiment as prevalent as the states themselves. The first ketchup recipes were printed in early cookbooks and were typically made of anchovies, cloves, ginger, and pepper. They were advertised as good to use with fish sauce or any savory dish of meat. Around the time of the Civil War, American sauciers decided to drop the fishy ingredients altogether and add some of their own flair to the treat. In an effort to satisfy the highbrow American palate, the recipe was updated to include more sugar. 
This gave a one-two punch of making the sauce tastier while also combating the strong vinegar taste that was used to preserve the ketchup. As ketchup's popularity grew, so did the need for foods that pair with it. U.S. cities grew larger, and so did the number of places to eat. This time of prosperity saw a rise in burger joints, chicken shacks, diners, and fancy restaurants. All places where ketchup reigned supreme. As if to emphasize its popularity and massive contributions to American cuisine, a 100-foot-tall ketchup bottle was once even constructed in 1949 by the W.E. Caldwell Company. But if bottles aren't your thing, you should head to Collinsville, Illinois, and check out their 8-foot-long ketchup packet. The origin of the name ketchup is one of much debate. Some say it's derived from the Cantonese word ketchup, which translates roughly to tomato sauce. Others claim it comes from China, and their pronunciation of ketchup, which means the brine of pickled fish. While the word ketchup caught on more in Europe and England, Americans adopted the spelling of catsup for a while. Though no one is really sure why. This is probably because there was no accepted printed version of the word until 1699, when the word ketchup first appeared in the new dictionary of the terms ancient and modern of the canting crew. The definition, a high East India sauce, was less wordy than the title of the book. Wherever the original term came from, we know that the first printed ketchup recipe appeared in the cookbook the Complete Housewife, in 1758. This English catch-up was the first known use of this updated spelling of the word. It wasn't until American entrepreneur and horseradish tycoon, Henry Hines, deliberately chose the spelling ketchup for his product that the word really took off. Hines wanted a way to stand apart from his competitors, most of which preferred the spelling catsup. If you've ever put a blob of ketchup on your plate or food, then we don't need to tell you what Heinz is. The H.J. Heinz Company was founded in 1869 by the titular Heinz and began selling not ketchup, but horseradish. Heinz introduced their version of ketchup in 1876. At the time, tomato ketchup wasn't new, but it was still not trusted. French cookbook author Pierre Blot had once called American ketchup filthy, decomposed, and putrid. That, paired with legends of lead poisoning, made tomato ketchup an unpopular condiment in the late 19th century. It was around that time that American chemist Dr. Harvey Washington Wiley, father of the Food and Drug Administration, decried the use of harmful preservatives like sodium benzoate and coal tar in the foods consumed at the time. A team-up started to brew. Heinz's success came after he teamed up with Dr. Wiley and revolutionized the process of making and preserving ketchup. Heinz was the first to use riper tomatoes, which resulted in higher quantities of natural pectin. This, combined with the use of more vinegar and sugar, made Heinz brand ketchup the reddest, freshest, and tastiest ketchup you could buy. Heinz also wanted to prove that he had nothing to hide with this unpopular form of ketchup, so he pioneered the use of glass bottles. Customers were able to see what they were buying for the first time, which in turn helped the U.S. become less sketchy about the catchy. All of Heinz's good ideas worked together to bring us America's favorite ketchup. By 1908, sales of Heinz ketchup had reached a yet unprecedented $2.5 million. So while it took a little while, Heinz would be the first to remind us that the best things come to those who wait. So that's everybody waiting for the ketchup to pour out of the bottle. Here's a hint, slap the 57 on the bottle. This is life-saving. In addition to being one of the top three highest selling condiments of all time, ketchup has a long and storied history both in and out of the food industry. In 1835, Dr. John Cook Bennett, who was president of the medical department at Willoughby University in Ohio, thought that tomatoes could be a miracle cure. So he developed Dr. Mills' compound extract of tomato, a hygiene pill that claimed to cure rheumatism, the flu, headache, and more. The remedy never actually worked, and it was yet another disappointing blow to the tomato industry. Today, we put ketchup on the outside of our cooked foods. However, originally, ketchup was only one ingredient used in making pies and sauces and to season fish and poultry while it was still being cooked. Despite being slandered with both lead poison rumors and a failed tomato pill industry, ketchup does offer health benefits. They're good for your heart and contain an antioxidant called lycopene, which can prevent certain forms of cancer. And it's not just good for the body. With its acidic vinegar and tomato ingredients, ketchup makes the perfect metal polisher that can remove even the toughest tarnish. Let's see mayonnaise do that. 
From a forbidden fruit nobody wanted to touch to the king of condiments, ketchup has come a long way from its fishy forefathers. Ketchup doesn't just make our mouths happy either. It turns out its creation has inspired everything from how we farm to what we reference in movies. And that's no surprise, since the Heinz company was selling upwards of 5 million bottles of the stuff per year by the early 1900s. The demand for the condiment was so high in the 1960s that it forced farmers to innovate tomato breeding and harvesting. The result helped define modern industrial agriculture and modern tomatoes. Inventions like the mechanical tomato harvester and genetic breakthroughs gave us more tomatoes with tougher skins that stay ripe longer and can survive the rough harvest and bumpy transport. The success the Heinz company saw also led to standardizations in can and bottle sterilization, a modernization that would see other food companies following suit. As the years went on, ketchup saw more and more references in pop culture as well. It had prominent mentions in both 1982's Diner and 1994's Pulp Fiction in a conversation about dipping fries, as well as the punchline to a clever joke. Ketchup. Newspaper advice columnists Dear Abby and Ann Landers both had to resolve issues relating to spouses who put ketchup on everything. And I want to say this to the television audience. I made my mistakes. And President Richard Nixon even made headlines in 1969 when he revealed his perfect breakfast, cottage cheese and ketchup. In many ways, that might be the worst thing he's ever done. From navigating the rocky shores to sitting in our refrigerator doors, ketchup has had quite the journey over the centuries and to our mouths. Americans purchase somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 billion ounces of ketchup every year. And that's almost three bottles per person. A whopping 97% of all American households contain at least one bottle of ketchup, with Heinz alone selling over 650 million of those. What was once a delicacy you could only get sparingly, ketchup can now be found in bottles, packets, and bottle-shaped dits. But ketchup isn't just for dipping. You could find menus all over the world where ketchup isn't just a garnish. It is the main course. China, Thailand, and Jamaican menus feature the famous ketchup-dosed chicken platters. In places like Trinidad, India, Japan, Poland, and Norway, don't be surprised to see ketchup pizza. There's also Canada's famous ketchup potato chips, ketchup pasta dishes, and even ketchup ice cream, or Canadian chocolate ketchup cake, if all that added sugar isn't doing enough for you already. So what do you think? What is a must-have with ketchup? Let us know in the comments below, and check out some of our other Weird History Food videos.